This is Jacob from the Sustainably Yours Homestead coming at you with a Shed Wars update. As a matter of fact, I'm about to log my first harvest. Woo! So let's see what we've got going on. I think my garden is a little behind a lot of people on the shed wars. I just didn't trust the weather. I kind of put things in a little later than a lot of people. Um, let's start with, uh, like the, I guess, the garden. Right here, these are my mystery tomato plants. Um, these plants, I think it, I shared in an earlier video. I started them in the greenhouse, and I used those little peat moss cups. And um, by the time I got around to planting them, the Sharpie that I used to label them had bled. And I, I have no idea what these are. This one is looking pretty good. I'm not going to prune any of them because I don't know if they're determinate or indeterminate. My little uh, three sisters squares, these first two, I think this is poor soil right here. These first two aren't really doing so well. But I've got my corn. The squash should still produce. I've got some grass in there that I need to clean out. And I believe in this one I had a couple of beans come up. Maybe not. Maybe I skipped these two because they didn't look great. This is Tabitha. So be still. Oh, see, don't do that. Every time. This is Tabitha the Tabby Cat. Come here. <clears throat> don't mess with my hand. Ah, there we go. Yeah, this is Tabitha the Tabby Cat. I don't like cats. I don't like cats because, first of all, I'm allergic to them. And second of all, I feel like I can't relax around a cat because you never know, just the slightest little move. And it's gonna try and climb your leg with its claws or something like that. So I don't really care for this thing, but for some strange reason, it seems to have taken a bit of a liking to me. But she was a stray running around my mother-in-law's neighborhood and she's very social and personable so my wife brought her home and I figure um, she'll probably make a pretty good Mauser. So you're welcome to stay. Just don't try and climb my legs. Back to the garden. Um, these three sisters plots look a little better. Corn's getting up there a little bit. Squash is starting to blossom a little bit. Here we have some beans coming up. These are just regular old garden beans, green beans. Get away from me, cat! Another plot here. More there. Get out from under my feet. Here we have some corn, I think a plant of squash, and then this kale. This kale is from last year. Man, it came back strong. The kids have ravaged these things multiple times this summer. I mean, they've picked it down to bear. They love the kale, but it's back. We have loads of cucumber plants. I'm going to have to get onto the other side of this fence and weed some of that. I've already weeded this side, but man, two days it's already growing back. So we got to get out here and do some mulching. 
think my okra is ready to be mulched. You can see the, the plants that are well developed. These are the first ones that I planted. I planted the okra a little early and a few of them came up. Most of them didn't. These smaller ones, these are the ones, these are the replants. But I think they're getting up tall enough now where I'm about ready to mulch all of them as well. The Chinese red noodle beans. I planted these early too. Uh, this is the pack that I got from um, Baker Creek. And I planted them all up and down this fence line. And only a handful came up. There are some of them. But just within the last few days, they've begun to shoot up. Got a couple more down here. And then a volunteer cucumber. I'm guessing this is going to be straight eight. I think that's all I grew last year. And on to some new stuff. All of these barrels and buckets and pots, with the exception of these three right here. I'll get to those in just a second. But all the rest of these are full of strawberry plants, free strawberry plants. I showed you these in the last video. I found someone on uh, Facebook Marketplace that was trying to get rid of a whole bunch of strawberry plants for free. Uh, just I came and I went and I dug them up, and uh, I ended up digging up roughly 200 plants. So I've got a bunch. I've got to find a place to put them right now. I just kind of have them in temporary whatever I could find to hold dirt boxes. But here pretty soon I'm going to have to put together my second Minecraft garden bed. We'll put it out there beside the first. And I think I'll turn that into a little strawberry asparagus rhubarb bed. We'll see how that turns out. Speaking of the Minecraft garden, let's go, uh, let's head out that way and see what we have going on there. I have some things there that I'm gonna try and harvest today. Yeah, but before we do that, let me introduce you to the two newest members of the homestead. We have ticks galore out here. So we're gonna start collecting some guinea fowl. These were the only two that they had available. The people that where we get our guinea fowl from, these were the only two they had available. So that's what we've got right now. But we'll be getting more. And while we're at it, why don't we pay a little visit to the chickens? Brought them a little food. There's Yoko. She kind of stands out like a sore thumb. They're getting big. I've still been keeping them right here in the, the coop. I haven't had the chance to come out and build their chicken run yet. As a matter of fact, there are my cedar posts that I cut. Gotta get those sunk next couple of days. And I almost forgot, I've got a few things planted out here around one of my apple trees. I have some, uh, some potatoes, which, I don't know. I've kind of neglected them. I probably haven't mounded them up the way I should have, but uh, hey. If you've never seen a potato flower, here's what they look like. Very much like a tomato. As a matter of fact, they're in the same family. But it looks a lot like a tomato flower, except uh, this one is purple. And I have another variety over here. Their flower is white. And I threw down some sweet corn right in here. I don't know how well it will do. A little bit of squash thrown in as well. And I've got, these are my red onions here. <laughs> I've kind of neglected this whole area out here. I almost forget about it sometimes. I need to get back out and weed and mulch again. But these onions, I didn't plan on, I don't plan on really touching them this year, but I have an idea for the kitchen. So I'm gonna pull a couple of these onions. Uh, they're probably not very big, but to be honest, that's the biggest onion I've ever grown. 
But that will do for what I have in mind. I'm gonna grab a couple of them. There's another good one. So we'll take those in and I've got a recipe in mind. Here we are. I will say I was a little disappointed again this year in the amount of garden space I was able to muster up, but I was able to almost double my space this year over last year. So we're making progress. Here are tomato plants. I've got nine tomato plants out here. Actually, I guess I have 10. This plant, uh, when I set all of these out, this plant broke. And so I just shoved it down in the dirt, wondering if it would, uh, if it would survive. Lo and behold, there it is. Get this weed out of here. So I guess that makes 10 Lincoln tomato plants. And they are coming along. Got a few flowers coming on. So hopefully before too long we'll have a few tomatoes. I had planted carrots all up and down these rows. These first two rows. But uh, I don't know. I think the heat got to them. Or lack of water or something. Here is about what we have left. Just a few sporadically dotting the, the path. Had a few more here. And I believe, I'm going to have to do some more research, but I do believe that we have some purslane here. Purslane? Something like that? Some lettuce. I'm probably going to take this in. It's kind of getting wilty. These days are getting hot and long, and I don't think the lettuce is going to do very well. So I'll probably make that part of my harvest. And then in here amidst the radishes that I'm going to be picking. Lots of radishes here. We've got some pepper plants. I've got three pepper plants here. These I think are uh, bell pepper or Ozark Giant. have three more pepper plants hidden among all of that stuff. A couple of eggplants. This one is looking pretty good. Here are some more radishes. I planted these about a week or two after the first set. And then I planted these radishes about a week or so after the, the second set. Swiss chard. Kind of wilty. If I come out in the mornings, it looks a whole lot better. But it's been hot. So it's kind of wilty. Probably needs a little water too. Indeed, uh, it's, it's a little there. Whoa, there you are again. What are you doing? Leave me alone. Let that be a lesson to you. You better stay away from that road. Chinese noodle bean. No, no, no. Um, The snake gourds are coming along too. They're getting kind of big. I planted a few more. Uh, I think I planted four seeds. Get out of there, get out of there. Hey. I think I planted four seeds uh, right along here. And I guess a couple of them have come up. Tomorrow or maybe the next day, I'm gonna put a, uh, a trellis arch right about there and then we'll plant some more um, snake gourds on the other side of it and let them grow up and maybe meet in the middle somewhere along here get out of there along here I have some more red Chinese noodle beans these are the ones that I got from Papa Pepper and I don't know if it's because I planted them later in the season, they had a better chance, or if they're just better seeds, but 
I had almost a 100% germination rate right here. And finally, I've got my four Lufa gourd plants. I've got to get out here and weed these out. They're kind of lagging behind probably because I'm not taking care of them. But that's what my gardens are looking like here on June the 15th. Kitty cat's trying to go after a bird. And I think bird's about to go after kitty cat as well. Oh. She backed off. But that's what the gardens are looking like here on June the 15th. Uh, let's go ahead and get to some harvesting, yeah. And now I'm gonna jump in here and pull some radishes. And I think I'm also gonna grab some of the Swiss chard, maybe a little bit of the kale over there. Um, I'm working on something. Radish number one. This is my first year ever trying to grow radishes, so I don't know. I think that's a decent sized radish. It's ready to go regardless. My phone was overheating outside, so I had to finish the job and then bring the party inside. But here is what I harvested. Got a couple of onions here. Um, some elephant garlic. This is the first time I've ever harvested elephant garlic. And really, I don't mean... Maybe there are some cloves under there, but these just seem more like onions. Um, these two right here came off of plants that had flowers still on them. These came off of plants where either I harvested the scape or um, maybe these are like first year, especially some of these smaller ones. Maybe they're first year and that's why they're forming the little onion shapes. But if you know anything about elephant garlic and you can tell me why they're doing this and what maybe I could do to get the nice big cluster of cloves, let me know down in the comments. That'd be awesome. In here we have, this is mostly radishes and radish greens um, a tick yep a tick crawling in there let's take care of that real quick all right I believe it's gonna take an entire guinea fowl army to get rid of a, all of our ticks but I've got some Swiss chard um, I've got some lettuce Ooh, I forgot to get the kale let me run out and grab that really fast there it is and now i'm going to get all of this stuff washed up so we can log in our first shed wars harvest here at the sustainably yours homestead we've got things cleaned up a bit these are the radishes that i ended up with these are all the greens all the radish tops i do plan on using these so um, we'll get to that in just a minute I have all of the, the other greens, the lettuce, the kale, and the um, Swiss chard. Our onions over here. Oh. And our garlic in the sink. Let's weigh this up. Here is my scale. I've got it set to uh, pounds and ounces, and it goes out to two decimal places on the ounces. I'm going to set... Got a little bowl here, and we are going to zero that out, and we're going to start with the garlic. Putting the garlic in, let's see what we have. We have 10.85 ounces of elephant garlic, and that's not even close to what all is out there. I just grabbed a little bit of it so we can use it. Okay, up next. Zero that. Zero that. There we go. Up next, we have our onions. 134 grams. That would be 4.75 ounces. The radish size kind of uh, 
was not very consistent. I had some that were pretty large. I had others that were pretty small. And some didn't even really make a radish at all. They weren't very rad. Alright, we have 14.95 ounces of radishes. 2.6 ounces of kale. Lettuce, we have three ounces on the nose. Swiss chard. Now, I've been kind of picking around on this in the garden, nibbling on it, and I really like that stuff. Um, it's really productive. I can't believe I've never grown it before. In this harvest, I've got 11 ounces of Swiss chard. And finally, I'm going to have to weigh up all of this stuff. I'm probably going to have to do it in several batches and then add it all up, so uh, I'll get to that. I'm our... <clears throat> On my radish tops, I ended up with a total of, and you can check my math there, but 5 pounds and 7 ounces, or roughly 2,463 2, grams. And you may be wondering why in the world I'm counting radish tops toward my Shed Wars total. It's cheating, right? No, I've got a perfectly good use for them, and if you want to know what it is, you'll have to stay tuned for the next video. Hopefully you've enjoyed this one. If so, please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe. And if you would like to follow along as we try and turn our home into a homestead, then be sure to ring the notification bell so you'll know when to be back for more daily sustainable living.